when should you invest your money into the stock market? Now, this is a question that's been asked for decades, if not centuries. But in the financial climate that we're currently in, with uncertainty and panic about inflation and the stock market crashing pretty hard, the question is more prevalent now more than ever. This is a question that I've been getting quite a lot on my other social media platforms. So I thought I'd dive a little bit deeper in this video and answer the question and give you my two cents on the matter. Before we get into it though, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be notified when I release new videos every single week. And if you do enjoy the video, then please hit the like button too. I am genuinely really grateful for all of you guys for listening and following along. I really do hope this channel helps you in some way financially or otherwise. So we have surpassed the 2000 subscriber mark here on YouTube and the next landmark goal for me is 10,000. So if you think your friends and family will benefit from my content, then let them know by sharing these videos to them. It'll make me really A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on TikTok. Yes, it's not just a dancing app anymore, but this video was there to help people understand the concept of compounding interest over time. I used an example of a 25 year old starting to dollar cost average into index funds until the age of 65. Now, hands down, the most common question I got from this video was, am I too old to start investing? And the ages of these people ranged from 30 all the way up to 50, 60 plus. And of course, I replied to every single one of these people telling them, absolutely not. It is not too late to start investing. And that applies to you too. Now, I strongly believe that everybody should invest. And there is a way of doing it that applies broadly to pretty much everybody, which in my opinion is investing over the long term into low cost index funds automating the process by setting up a monthly payment and pretty much forgetting about it, not financial advice. Now, there is a caveat to that. You need to have a strong financial foundation before you get investing. Whether you're 50, 30 or 18, the same rules apply. So then what does it mean to have a strong financial foundation? Well, just like building a house, you need to dig into the ground, fill it with concrete and ensure you can build a house on a good structure so it won't collapse or sink. I mean, I know nothing about building. I'm just I'm just guessing that's what you do. But if it is, the same is true for personal finance. The good news is that these financial foundations are pretty much recognized by everybody in the finance and personal finance space, which should certainly give you some confidence that there is definitely some truth in it. Now, I can certainly vouch for them because they definitely gave me a strong foundation, both financially and mentally. So I've broken them down into three pillars because, you know, pillars give things strength and it's a good foundation. Pillar number one is to be free of bad debt. Bad debt meaning high interest debt that was used to buy liabilities, things that go down in value. Examples of this would be car finance, credit card debt, store cards, or the worst thing in the world, buy now, pay later. Now these are all bad debts that are gonna weigh you down and prevent you from building wealth. So you need to get rid of them, get rid of them quick, stay away from them, and then not go into them going forward. This means that going forward, you just buy things with cash that you can actually afford. Now, in my opinion, there is such thing as good debt, but that only really applies to things like a mortgage because most of us just can't buy a house outright or a low interest loan for something like starting a business. For me, those are the only ones that I do myself. So that's the only ones that I'm gonna talk about that I think should be acceptable. So by not having any bad debt, you open up more cash flow to allocate to other things such as investing, or moving on to the next pillar of your financial foundation. Now, the second step, once you are debt free, is to build up an emergency fund, a rainy day fund, a what if fund, call it whatever the hell you want. You just need a cash buffer between you and bad luck. Now, this, in my opinion, is the biggest emotional and mental foundation. I cannot emphasize enough what a good feeling it is knowing that if things go wrong, you've got a pot of money there to prevent you from going into debt. If you think of your financial stress levels as a battery, and once you have at least three to six months worth of expenses inside an easy access account in cash, it's like you're fully charged. Day-to-day -day stress dims down and you can actually focus on enjoying other things. Personally, I had never ever had 1,000 pounds sitting in an account that just wasn't assigned to anything else. And I would always just spend all my money, get to zero because my money was just burning a hole in my pocket. However, as soon as I taught myself how to be disciplined with money and leave money inside that emergency fund, I almost felt like a huge weight was just lifted off my shoulders. And touch wood, 
since our emergency fund has been in place in 2020, we haven't had to dip into it. It almost feels like now that we're prepared for things to go wrong, they go wrong less. And the third and final pillar for me is that you need to have a budget. To work out how much you actually can invest requires you to know what's coming in versus what's going out. Many people stick to a percentage of their income to invest. And this is a great way to prevent lifestyle creep because as you get older, you tend to earn more. So your investments go up with that, forcing you to be intentional and not just slipping into buying nice cars and a bigger house just to impress other people. I have a budget spreadsheet on my website if you wanna take a look at it and use it, but truthfully, you can just do this yourself. You just need to dig deep and remember what your year seven IT teacher taught you. Or just stick to a written budget if you prefer. It's just about tracking your spending and allocating the resources that are coming in. And once you have these pillars in place, you have a strong foundation and it's time to invest. Remember, investing is just simply growing your money over time. And a good way to think about it is just storing your wealth over a time period. Index funds are as close to a one size fits all as you can get. Investing in index funds is a way to spread the risk of your investing into the entire stock market or a specific sector rather than putting all your money onto one stock that may or may not go bust. Yes, potential returns may be lower, but the volatility is too. And generally, the most common index funds actually outperform inflation. For example, the S&P 500, which is a collection of the biggest 500 companies in America, has returned on average annually 10.5% since 1957. Yes, things like Bitcoin could give you insane returns overnight, but in my opinion, speculative investing like this should only be done with a very small percentage of your investment portfolio. For me, it's around 5%. This smooths out the bumps. So it's safe to say then when it comes to investing that I think the bulk of your money should be going into index funds. And I think this should be done every single month, which is known as dollar cost averaging. Leave it in there for a long period of time until you need the money when you can sell them off. Utilizing your employee match with your pension or a SIP, a self-invested personal pension to get tax relief is a great idea. But also a stocks and shares ISA is great because you can get tax-free growth and tax-free withdrawals. There's a lot to get into when it comes to these accounts. So find out a bit more about them in this video here. And to reiterate the answer to the initial question of when should I invest? It's when you have a strong financial foundation. Get the protection in place, then build wealth. Regardless of your age, gender, religion, or shoe size, investing is necessary for you to store the value of your money over time and then grow it. Thank you very much for getting this far and I hope you got something useful out of the video. If you have any questions about getting started with investing, then just leave a comment below or feel free to contact me. I reply to everything. And if you haven't done so already, just quickly hit that subscribe button and enjoy the next video that you're about to watch. See you next time.